life. Hey, it's Melinda from Hope When There Was None. <laughs> like I said, she is a cute little pixie. Oh my God. <laughs> So I, know, if I, had pocket, I would just put you in my pocket. You know, I would. That would be a delight. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here with me. It is day three of my self-love challenge throughout the month of February. I'm coming on either live or posting something about self-care and self-love. And this beautiful spirit, I have several people lined up to join me this month to share something. So you are coming on and, you know, you brainstorm something wonderful for me. I appreciate it. We're talking self-sabotage, shadow work, and all this other goodness. And she has a couple goodies going on and coming up soon and i'll be sharing those in the links you can find those below okay so i'm gonna let you take it away because i just realized i didn't even say your name <laughs> oh, i didn't even introduce you i'm assuming everybody should know who you are <laughs> you're hilarious no 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 worries um i'm just gonna say i guess like my name is marina I am the CEO and the founder of Mastering Human, which is a platform that I use to do a lot of post-traumatic growth-based education. And I assist humans through the more sticky and challenging elements of the human experience. For example, uh, working through your triggers, partaking in trauma recovery, working through your self-sabotage, busting through your limiting beliefs, and rewiring your subconscious mind, as well as recalibrating and healing your nervous system so that you could be the most confident, empowered, liberated and expressed version of yourself in the world. Because at the end of the day, I'm just going to say it's always trauma behind all of your shit, all of the patterns, all of the shitty habits, all of the ways that we create friction and dysfunction in relationships, those behaviors are born of trauma and are still continuously being reinforced because that trauma imprinting continues to live inside of us. So we just have to learn how to work on ourselves on a trauma and nervous system level in order to actually start changing how we show up in the world in order to have different results and a different higher quality of relationships. Woo. <laughs> you know what? That you had gotten me so fired up the other day. And I, you know, I went ahead and I decided, well, I'm gonna go definitely start doing a lot more self-care. And, and you talked about that I'd gotten a little fluffy and I wanted to work on that. But I told my husband today, you know, I am signing up for that course that I was telling you about, the hula hooping mm -hmm. course to become certified. I'm gonna do it today. And then I'm also going to do a massage or some sort of self-care for myself monthly. I sort of drifted away from that. So thank Thank you for, you know, helping me that little pep talk of getting some of those negative voices out of my head. You're amazing. And um, I really needed that. So yeah, this, when we started talking, it just hit home so well, because I know myself, I would talk myself out of so much, but I never really pictured it as being some sort of trauma or a trigger, something like that, really and truly. So is that a normal thing? I mean, people that don't have trauma can also experience that. Is that correct? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to say that like most of the time, most of it does originate from a trauma related thing. Like this is a bigger conversation. I'm just going to open it up yeah. with that. And like, yeah, of course, normal, hu not normal humans, we're all normal <laughs> humans, but like, even people without a lot of trauma and trauma stuff will also experience resistance, procrastination, uh, you know, like all the typical stuff that often sometimes gets in the way of us executing on things that we know are good for us. So you're right. It's definitely not just siloed to us survivors. <laughs> 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 but you know, it's funny that you mentioned normal humans, like my uh, Mr. Awesome, my husband, I consider him normal because he didn't grow up in or experience any trauma like that, like I had, I didn't, I didn't have, um, you know, like he had the Harriet and Ozzy, Ozzy and Harriet kind of relationship, his parents, I should say. So he grew up in such like a, not Brady Bunch, but just 
really normal fighting, but nothing like I experienced. There was no verbal abuse, emotional abuse, anything like that, unless between brothers and sisters, <laughs> that's, you know, normal kid stuff. So for somebody that is, um, had never experienced it, he doesn't always understand. He doesn't always get it. He's very sympathetic. He's very caring and loving, but he doesn't always get it. So when I'm lacking in hearing that self-sabotage, that voice in my head. So how, how is it somebody can just start kicking that to the curb so they can continue their healing journey and practice? Absolutely. Let's look at it through the nervous system lens, awesome. because ultimately it's our nervous system state that infer like that informs and dictates the kind of thoughts that we have in our head and the mood that we're in. So I hope you're still we, there. I, I, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the internet, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm just gonna say that again. Basically, like the quality of our thoughts and the mood that we're in is a direct result of a nervous system state that we're currently inhabiting. So usually when we are um, or experiencing our inner critic and it's very loud or having those like limiting thoughts of like, it's never going to work out. Uh, everyone is a suspect. You know, when we're feeling like suspicious or we feel like we might get let down or perhaps we're feeling like, oh, this always happens to me and <laughs> feeling hopeless or yeah. withdrawn or defeated. All those typical states that we fucking hate and we're like, what's, what's this coming from? Usually it's because we've already become dysregulated on a nervous system level. So if we want to, or like uh, learn an approach to start cleaning up the kind of content that goes through our heads and the kind of thoughts that we experience, we can work on the nervous system state first okay. to regulate and get out of fight or flight. I'll explain this in a moment. And then that will start cleaning things up all on its own. And then if there's anything lingering or left over, that's still like something we don't necessarily want to feel or think, then we can use other tools for like emotional regulation and inner child work, parts work or whatever, whatever else you're using for your self healing journey. So I'm going to say like, okay, nervous system states, right? <laughs> Let's just look at it very simplistically. We can be regulated where we feel like centered um at ease like we can tackle challenges perhaps navigate whatever adversity is at hand and we're in our window of tolerance okay so yes maybe little pickles might happen maybe you know like there's traffic or you get in a small argument with a friend but you don't feel like it completely derails you or knocks you out then you're like in your window of tolerance and you're still in a regulated state okay okay and then there's us getting dysregulated which means we have been kicked into fight or flight or freeze or fawn you know our four states of survival mode and that means that our nervous system has been kicked out of like this centered neutral homeostasis place into either hyper arousal like gets activated, you know, we feel like this mobilization of energy within us and we either go into anger or forcing or pushing or controlling or running away, that kind of stuff. And I'll go into that in greater detail, or we end up falling into hypo arousal, which means we get go below our window of tolerance. And that's when people usually feel like numb, withdrawn, lethargic, lazy, exhausted, and even sometimes just like they might think they're feeling good, but it's actually because they're not feeling anything at all. It's like a full state of disassociation. So those are the two dysregulated, um, I'll call them like areas or states, either hyper arousal, where literally our nervous system mobilizes energy to help us combat or run away from threat. Mm -hmm. Because for some reason, we just started to feel either really stressed in danger, or we perceive some kind of threat in our environment. And that could be just an anticipation of an emotional uh, injury, 
Like all of a sudden we feel like we might get rejected, abandoned, betrayed, or neglected, and we get kicked into that hyper arousal mode, or we get kicked into hypo arousal. And that usually happens. We only go into hypo arousal when for some reason we felt like deep down that we couldn't actually fight it or flee it. Then we go into fawn or freeze. So freeze is the full shutdown, fawn is submit. So we try to appease, please, rescue, you know what I mean? Right. Kind of like become small, shape shift, become whatever the situation needs of us. And then if that doesn't work, then we usually like withdraw or like literally leave the situation mentally, daydream, or feel like completely disconnected. And so usually how our like the process that the nervous system goes through, like first it'll always try to fight. If it can't fight, it'll go to flee. If it can't flee, it'll go to fawn. And then if all that doesn't work or you don't have the capacity for all that, then you're probably going to freeze. So before <laughs> I go on, you, you, yeah, let me yeah, know. I, I know. No, I relate to all of, I, at one point in time, I know I've related to all those and I still have little bits here and there in different situations where I know I still use those. I still go to those. I do. I still go to those. Oh my goodness. So, and also when someone is going to start this healing process with that, this isn't going to happen. It's not like a cure all overnight. You're waving a magic wand and saying you're, you're healed. It takes a lot of work. So what are we like a few weeks, a couple months? I know for me, it's been years, <laughs> but yeah. um, I don't know what that looks like for, for somebody. Forever. So <laughs> this is how your nervous system works, right? Like, and this is something that happens automatically, right? You, you don't right. think twice about like, okay, I'm going to fight this. I'm going to try to control, force, manage, or literally attack in this situation. We just slip into that automatically. Same with flee, same with submit, same with freeze. And what like what we can work on, though, is one expanding our nervous system capacity, okay. meaning widening our window of tolerance. So we don't get kicked into dysregulation by hard things and we can handle more and more adversity. Okay. And part two is learning to notice when we are in a dysregulated state and how to intervene and bring ourselves back into a place of regulation before we act out, before we slip into an old pattern of what we usually do. Gotcha. You know, like, does that make sense? It does make sense. And it it's kind of reminds me of using your five senses when I'm like having before a long time ago, when I would have a panic attack, it would be like something I see, you almost have to pause just, just a moment, just kind of pause and get your bearings on what you're gonna do kind of calm yourself. So that's what it sounds like. What kind of, what are you using in order to do that? Is it similar, like a breathing meditation? What is something that you can use? There are a lot of different techniques and modalities, but most of them work on like the vagus nerve, which is like the longest, biggest nerve that runs through our entire body and basically dictates how well we handle stress. And usually when we have a very traumatic past, our vagus nerve doesn't function in its optimal capacity. And hence why we have a really hard time re-regulating after being dysregulated. And most trauma survivors take like twice or three times as long to actually like recover and become neutral again than those that haven't had that. And for example, like one that is super easy that I usually recommend for the heat of the moment is something called Bramari breathing. It is a technique, it's like bumblebee breath, but basically what happens is you just like take a deep breath in and then you just like hum like M okay. your closed mouth and you would do that like three times or like three cycles of three and it vibrates your vagus nerve here and it like cues it to turn on the vagal break and the vagal break without like getting into all the scientific -y terms basically puts on like the damper on the stress response 
Okay. So you're like agitated, you feel activated, a stress response has begun in your body because you feel either triggered or under some kind of threat that you don't think you can handle or that your window of tolerance doesn't have capacity for. And then we can use, for example, this little tool to start vibrating and activating the vagal break to demobilize the energy that's been like activated in your system to help you fight or flight. Well, I've got a question for you because now that you're talking about that, do many of us already have this kind of like self-soothing already ingrained in us? Because I know myself after much, many things, when something bad happens <laughs> or I have something traumatic happens, I know I have a habit of maybe singing or humming um, afterwards, whether, you know, it's a half hour later or something. And I know that gives me a lot of peace or I like to dance. Movement is very, very um, good for me. So is that something, so are we using our body and we're singing, we're humming? Or is that something, some other type to help that vagus nerve? Absolutely. Yeah. Like to deal with a stress response, for example, us getting dysregulated and in turn going into a shitty habit, we have to process and discharge the stress on a somatic level, like through the body and like singing. Yes, that helps that humming helps that dancing also helps us discharge and move like this intensity that's like come alive yes. inside of us. And there's so many different tools and approaches and there are different ones for different activation states. You're not going to need the same stuff for freeze as you would use for fight or flight. Ooh. So it's kind of like a matter of like recognizing what's actually taking place in your body. For example, like when we are in freeze, so we're like shut down numbing, lethargic, disassociating, we need to upregulate, meaning we need to mobilize energy in the body now to bring you back into your window of tolerance. So you have energy again, and can respond consciously instead. Whereas like when we're in hyper arousal, we're like feeling on edge, snappy, irritable, angry, or we're like, becoming a, like being a workaholic and just staying busy and pushing through and forcing results, whatever, we need to down regulate, which means we need to dis discharge the stress, the activation, the restlessness that's been built up in our body to help us cope. We have to release that. And then we would use a, a few other tools to help us come back into a more neutral and level place. Wow. So like, when we're frozen and we feel like hopeless, defeated, um, stuck, stuck is a really good way to describe that. We need to reactivate ourselves, you know, like, ding, like push, press the on button again. <laughs> Whereas like, if we've been, like, you know, hit by lightning and we're all of a sudden feeling charged up and we either want to fight or flight, we need something to first like wring ourselves out of all that extra energy and then bring ourselves back to a more like centered and coherent place. Oh, and you know, sense? it makes sense. And then when we're going to, when we're thinking about self-sabotage, it seems like I put that pause button on. I put that freeze on. So I'm not moving forward. I just talk myself out. These negative things in my head come out and um, it, I just talk myself out of a lot of things. I'm not going to do this because this, you know, I'm too fluffy to be a hula hoop teacher. I, I told you a lot of this. I'm, I'm not that healthy. I don't eat a lot of salads. It's too much money. And I'm just talking myself out of that. But, and then, you know, I'm putting that pause on. It's like, okay, I can't do this. I can't. <laughs> I can't. And remember, it's like, these are all like very automatic and they come from our autonomic nervous system, which is the same nervous system that like helps our heart keep beating and our lungs keep breathing. So this is like on a very deep and primal level that we ended up get kicked into 
these states. So don't be like, oh, I always end up choosing to be like this or, you know what I mean? As though it's like you should just have better willpower and do better. It's not like that at all. All we can do to be empowered now is like besides expanding our window of tolerance, which is like a different conversation, is to just notice when you are dysregulated or triggered and then know what tool to use at what time to give yourself what you need to basically re-regulate and level out. And then from there, that literally changes the quality of the thoughts you're having on its own and it'll shift your mood. And then, like I said, if there's leftovers, then we can use our typical like mindset mastery kind of hacks or inner child healing tools or whatever that you've been using for yourself to like, you know, help right. with your own self-empowerment. Oh, yeah. And you know what, that could be, um, it just brought to my mind uh, with self-sabotage, but people not pursuing different relationships or staying in relationships that might not be that good, they're kind of maybe abusive or just negative, because that, that's all they think that they're good enough for. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know if it's the same kind of thing, it just kind of popped in my head. Is that like a, I don't know, what are your thoughts? I feel like usually when people stay and they know they don't like what's at hand and they know on some level that they're compromising yes. or getting less than they deserve or they're settling, they're in submit, they're in fawn. Okay. Right. So wow. they're already in a dysregulated state, but they don't know how to get themselves out of that. Mm -hmm. And in turn, that's a primal reason why they stay stuck plus like obviously it's loaded right when you're in a toxic abusive relationship yes. usually there's also cognitive dissonance going on you know like we just can't compute the fact that how can this person that has their good moments and loves me sometimes also be a fucking monster right? <laughs> you know yes. it's like, it doesn't make sense and then that makes us also have a hard time making decisions then there's also like denial right? Like the first right. step of grief, actually, when you already know deep down, like that it's over and that they're bad for you and you have to go. But like the first wave of processing something that you know, like that is denial, right? So people right. talk themselves out of it and keep settling without realizing they're already just in grief over a truth that they're not ready to embrace, right? Right. Right. And there's yeah, there, and like aside from that too there is like what's it called it's called intermittent conditioning right? right so usually when you're going through that cycle of abuse over and over again even when it's subtle where you have we're going through that like uh what's called the drama triangle right yep the perpetrator victim wow well, i'm missing the last one but you know what i'm talking about and like right. tension builds there is disruption honeymoon phase tension builds disruption honeymoon phase we get addicted to the stress hormones of that. And then you're right. no longer, most of the time, you're not even like, as you know, like not even in love with the person anymore and you don't even like them, but you're extremely chemically hooked on the hormones that would get flushed every single time you would have the breakdown and the stress yeah. and the stress and also all the gooey hormones that would come through the contrast of the love compared to what you just went through that was so terrible. So I just wanted to right. speak on those three things. That's usually very much a part of why people end up stuck too. Not just because they're in a stress response and stuck in fawning. It's also because of all those other factors. All that other stuff you know. too. Yeah, because I'm also thinking of uh, some folks that are in a toxic work environment and it almost seems very similar without the intimacy or the family type of situation that you might have in a job but it's very similar and it and I can even picture myself thinking you know what there's all this drama all the time and it almost seemed like I was a magnet for drama but it was that high and there were moments where I would just I think make some drama just so I can feel those endorphins and all that other the gooey stuff come on back um, and that was almost like I I did a detox from that unhealthy relationship but I was very, very slowly detoxing from it. And I didn't know what normal or healthy looked like. And so yeah, I wasn't, I was really a mess. I really was. And you just put it together so eloquently. Thank you. 
Oh, my Thanks. pleasure. I mean, I've struggled with this a lot myself. And it's like one of the number one things I help my clients with too. And I so often hear it's just like, Oh, why can't you just leave? Like, don't you know better? Or it's just like, haven't you been hurt enough? And like, like stabby statements like that, that I'm like, wow, okay, the trauma awareness is missing, because it's not like that person likes to be in that situation. Exactly. And it's not like we love to suffer. Unfortunately, there's so many greater forces at play, like fear too, right? You know, right. it's like terrifying, like how they'll react. Like, why do you think we're still here? Because we're scared that if we share our feelings or our truth, that they're going to blow up like they always do, or they're going to threaten us like they have in the past, exactly. or they're going to withdraw or they have control over your finances or your resources. Like that's right also in the picture. Right, right. And they, if you've never been in a relationship like that, volatile, or even a, fi a family dynamic, because sometimes our families are so toxic and you, uh, people, and I hear this a lot, they don't feel comfortable with saying, I'm sorry, mom, I can't be with you anymore. Getting those boundaries and drawing a line in the sand saying, mom, you can't treat me like this anymore. You know, I'm 36 years old. Uh, I'm using an example. I'm not 36. I'm just saying what? as an example. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but as an example, you know, I'm, I'm an adult man, I'm an adult woman, I, I can't break it off with my parent, even though they're toxic, or uncle or aunt, whatever the dynamic looks like. And they, it's a, a very similar, they just, they can't do it. You know, and there might be those threats or you know, you're my only child. How can you do this to me? I'm your mother. Or I'm your dad. You know, um, and so on and so on. You won't get a penny from me when I die or, or something like that. But these are real things that people do tell other people. And it's so sad. It really is. It's so sad. But no, I've been there. I've done, I've been there, done that. I understand completely. And I just want to share, which I didn't at the beginning. I am sharing your link right here. I think, or maybe I did say that, but here is your group. Can you tell me a little bit about your group? I know about your group, but somebody out there watching <laughs> my, is not going to know how awesome your group is. Oh, thank you. It's just basically a hub for inner healers and a safe space for people to get plenty of free healing resources, um, material and content to assist them on their own self exploration path, and also assist them in learn what self mastery actually takes and how they can go about that. And I often stream like free trainings on all different kinds of things regarding like your self realization and self healing process and things that you can implement right away to create real tangible shifts in your life. And then of course, there's a bunch of other humans in there that are, you know, like minded and just as dedicated to get into the trenches of their stuff and unpack their baggage and be seen in that. So for the most part, I love it as a space for humans to come undone and to get like inspiration, motivation, and then very like tactical neuroscience based tactics and pragmatic approaches from like my trauma education and my practice that will assist them in making micro shifts that are actually like sustainable in their lives so they can create lasting transformation within and, like yeah okay. and, and speaking i didn't mean to interrupt you and speaking of which you do have ta -da, upcoming oh. training in touch training what is that all about Oh, thank you for asking. Yes, this is called In Tune, and it's a three-part nice conversation. In touch. I'm sorry. In touch is perfect. It's all about getting in touch with yourself <laughs> and cultivating deeper self-connection and self-attunement, um, which is what we're already talking about. You know what I mean? Like, in order to stop yourself from self-sabotaging and replaying a toxic pattern, you have to catch yourself being dysregulated first okay. and then know what to do in the moment to make sure that you don't slip into default mode and replay history. So this training right now, it's already streaming. There's three workshops. The first one is get to know your nervous system. So you're going to get to experience a deep dive on all the stuff we started talking about. Like, how do you know when you're in fight, 
uh, flee, freeze, or um, fawn by like different behaviors that that actually looks like. You know, we're not just going to actually be like fighting every time we're in fight or like fleeing or like booking down the street every time we're in, <laughs> you know, flight. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I express how what that looks like in the day to day in the workplace and in relationships, especially in hard conversations in relationships. Like I cover what how to know when you're dysregulated and what state you're in based on what hard situation you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. And then the second workshop is called Secrets to Secure Love, where I've created like a trauma informed nervous system um, aware criteria that you would apply to your existing connections and future relationships to know whether you're actually compatible, like what to truly look out for in other humans based on emotional bandwidth, nervous system capacity, and other qualities that most people don't talk about that actually end up destroying relationships in the long run because people are in different places. Oh. Oh, dang. So, that's, that sounds really cool. Oh, wow. thank you. So that's like the second one, which I'm really stoked on. And then the third one I just released is called Triumph Over Triggers. And it's like in the moment tools, awarenesses, and techniques to help you diffuse the charge inside of yourself on a somatic and nervous system level to make sure that you don't end up spiraling when you've been activated. And then you can make more conscious choices instead and they're all pre-recorded so once you register you'll get all of them into your inbox along with integration homework and yeah once you sign up you'll get one every hour because they're already all released and then you have until february 13th to plug in at any time before it becomes a paid course oh wow that sounds really cool that does sound really cool. And I know you're on Instagram as well. So I've got you there, but all of these can be found in the comments. So you don't have to frantically write. They are in the comments section too. <laughs> oh, thank you so wow. much. Yeah, I'm really excited because I thought about like, what are the like most heavy hitting awareness shifts and techniques that I've been able to offer my clients in the past that they've been able to actually make a radical difference in the way that they approach like self-regulation and self-healing and also the bigger issues that I've experienced myself with like learning how to self-help and discharge pain and triggers in my life and also in relationships. So I just wanted to like pick out the gems that have really served me and other people and like just dump it into these three trainings. And then for anyone that really loved this specific series, they can then hop into my deeply attuned group program, which is starting on February 20th, which will be like a 10 week deep dive into developmental trauma, which means like oh, wow. actually looking at the cause and effect of everyone's all forms of self sabotage. Okay. And then the second part of that, like uh, experience will be all the different tools and applications from very different like schools of thought that you can weave into like a new lifestyle that you have for yourself. So you're constantly expanding your window of tolerance, like we talked about at the beginning. So you can actually constantly handle even more stress, even more emotional blows, even more changes and discomfort without getting dysregulated. Oh, dang, that is awesome. That really <laughs> is awesome. Wow, that really is. Oh my goodness, and you're so easygoing. This would be, um, I could see where somebody would also be um, really this is some kind of walk that you're doing with somebody because these are big things. These are real big things when you're on that healing process. And I do have to ask because I am so dang nosy. What was it that got you started doing this type of work? Because it's not, I shouldn't call it work because you can tell it is a passion for you. You definitely have a passion. You're not just doing it. Hey, I'm getting a paycheck. You know, I'm just doing this. You're not, you're doing it because it's in your heart. It's really printed on your heart. And uh, so what was it for you? Was there something magical or sadly sad that? Uh, sadly sad. <laughs> My big words, you've used all the big words today. So I just <laughs> grasp it. Oh, no, no, that was perfect. It was definitely the suffering. Yep. Oh. I mean, a lot of that. Uh, 
I don't know, there's so much to say, but like I grew up with a narcissistic parent, you know, and like experienced a lot of narcissistic abuse growing up, which like just destroyed my self-confidence and self-esteem to the point that I was like crippled by social anxiety and so much self-loathing and had a long leg of addiction and suicide attempts and really extreme like big T traumas because I felt so worthless that I would put myself in situations unconsciously that, you know what I mean, would just like repeat history. Um, and um, after experiencing like a lot of really intense like abuse, not just in my household, but like also like immigration trauma and also constantly being with partners that treated me like shit for a very long time because of my own codependent nature, which is like the natural byproduct of growing up with emotionally volatile or abusive or neglectful or emotionally immature parents, <laughs> which so many of us have, <laughs> you know, because they just couldn't do better and they didn't know better and they never got it themselves. So like right. bless their hearts. But, <laughs> you know, as a result, then we become partners that constantly take a lot of shit, settle for breadcrumbs, let people stick around and try to fix and rescue them. So that was me forever. And I was like, I'm so Dang it. fucking fed right. up with self-sacrificing and like giving myself away and doing everything in my power to drag other people out of addiction, to help them heal, to build their business, to build up their life. Like I would take it all on because my heart would bleed for how much trauma I know they went through to be that dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And then of course that draws in people that are like, you know, in themselves feel helpless and then they so they take 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 and then they don't know how to actually treat you well in return and then anyways so like in a nutshell all of that <laughs> I was just fed the beep up just right. straight up fed up with and you know when uh fed up is a powerful place to be and oftentimes when we're desperate do we actually make the moves necessary to change and luckily I suffered so much that I was desperate enough to like put all my life and energy into this work and I'm glad I have like it's been a very long term journey so I'm not going to be like yeah like I just learned this stuff and I'm healed and woo, like <laughs> definitely definitely not but I mean now it's definitely a passion because I love people and I love humanity and I feel like yes hurt people hurt people so let's right. help people stop being so freaking hurt so <laughs> <laughs> they don't hurt other people <laughs> well I just love that you actually you're you're talking the talk and you're walking the walk you're someone that's been there you're not somebody that just sent away for a certificate and says well I'm just gonna do this and I've met many kind-hearted really good-hearted people but they don't understand the trauma they don't understand that they can't sometimes they're not they don't relate I know seeing a therapist myself a few of them and they just had no they weren't trauma counselors so they had no no um, idea they couldn't relate and I know there's some coaches out there like out there like that too honestly I'm so passionately frustrated about that matter like I think I've been like very naive until like two years ago I just assume that if you are a counselor or like a therapist that that must mean you're extremely trauma trained I was like well fucking duh like how could you not be this is the basis of all behavior like all behavior you know <laughs> and then like I just one of my multiple friends went through like the technical the traditional counseling school and would share with me what they would actually learn there and like trauma is not a part of the curriculum and that's only something you can actually specialize in if you're like PhDing and lots of people can't even go that route because it's so hard so expensive and actually puts you in a box so you can't even use like a whole variety of healing modalities in your practice. Wow. You're like regulated by the council and the council is not progressive. Wow. So that blew my mind. I, I can't even, and I'm also like that person that's going to say this, it's spicy, but like, please don't be like coaching. Like it depends on what you're coaching on, but if you're coaching people through sabotage and, you know, resistance and, 
typical life stuff, like please get some kind of trauma education. Otherwise, you're not going to actually offer a supportive safe space for humans. You know, like it misses so much and it makes the client feel like they're not doing it right if they're not getting results when really like they're not getting the tools and the support to actually break free from their stuff at a core level, you know? Right, right. Thank you. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) You go. Yes. You know, like whether that that coach or that therapist at least worked on some of that stuff for themselves, like they didn't have to go through like something intense, like a hardcore certification. But as long as like they got curious and at least read some books, talked to some people, maybe went for their own therapeutic support somewhere, like at least, at least that. Right, right. That would be like me being... I don't know, somebody that would be knowledgeable about uh, reptiles. I've never owned a reptile. How the hell am I going to know about a reptile? So, but yeah, yeah, I, I guess that's a totally different topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's perfect. And yes. also like, it, like when you do it on yourself, um, you have a greater mercy and understanding and compassion for the actual obstacles that you're right person is going to be going through and the nitty gritties of what holds them back and what makes them extremely insecure and where they're actually fragile so you can help them move through the actual nuances that it come that happen with going from a to b like from where they are and where they want to go like that is what where transformation happens in the nuances So like, how do you know the nuances and the complications and the complexities if you've never tried to do it yourself? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, well, we could keep going on that, but (laughs) we're going to pause. And I just want to say thank you so very much. And again, you know, show her some love. There's the links there you can find in the comment section. So I'll be posting this on, um, I'll go ahead and I'll tag you, but it'll be on YouTube a little bit later. And I think I'm going to try Instagram because I think I can upload a video there. And um, of course, the podcast on anybody's favorite listening platforms, Apple or Anchor or Spotify and so on and so on. So I'll now have all of her links on there. So Maureen, thank you so very much. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. (laughs) Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. I hope that was like enough that I shared that people can actually like take and use because I know we just covered the surface with a lot of things. Yes, which which brings me to another one. I didn't know if you had time to think about a challenge for people out there to do. I just thought of that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I think it would just be really great. Okay. Let's just cover the four quadrants of fight or flight, freeze or fawn quickly. And then the challenge would be just to start noticing when you yourself may be dysregulated and in one of these states. So then you become more hyper aware of yourself and then know when to apply a tool or, you know, self-soothe in some way or somehow. Awesome. Okay. So let's just think of like, how does fight manifest? This one's kind of like speaks for itself, but like when, you know, you find yourself getting like very, out of proportion, like don't take that literally, but like out of proportion, irritated, angry, upset in response to a situation that is seemingly small, we'll say that. Um, Oftentimes when we just try to like push through when we already like have run out of juice or force an outcome when something's just Mm. not panning out, Um, arguing, intimidating, actually like verbally, attacking or um yeah just re- like finding yourself being like wired but tired and like very restless and in overdrive is kind of like how you could classify yourself when you're in that state okay and that can usually be accompanied with feeling heat in your body, like usually a contraction, maybe even like sometimes shaking. It really depends on the intensity and you being attuned to your own body. Mm -hmm. So there's, that's like identifying yourself in fight. 
Okay. Then we have the flight, the flea quadrant. And so usually like workaholism and being super busy is actually in flight because we are running away from this problem by focusing and distracting ourselves with all this other shit and being super busy and tackling all this other stuff on our plate than usually dealing with the root of our problem and usually like what we got dysregulated by is what we're trying to outrun by focusing on something else. Gotcha. Usually we get dysregulated by our own thoughts and feelings in response to a thing. So we're like, oh my God, I don't want to feel that. So I'm just going to take on three new projects and work overtime five yeah. days a week. And, <laughs> you know, and like focus on everyone else's problems too. That's very common. Ooh. It's like when people spend a lot of time saving, helping and rescuing everyone else. It's actually because they're, fleeing <laughs> from something within themselves and then also as you can imagine like literal escapism whether that's like drugs sex food n any kind of numbing netflix uh completely just again creating distance between me like and the thing <laughs> and okay. like getting my awareness elsewhere basically okay so that's our flight zone and then we have, let's say, our fawn. So submit, people pleasing, appeasing in action. And that's also like, okay, how do I make myself um, whatever you need me to be? Mm -hmm. How do I make sure I show up in a way that doesn't create conflict? How do I act meek and humble so you don't feel threatened or jealous of me? So you don't end up like doing something mean, terrible, competitive, whatever. Right. Um, another way to detect fawn is just like literally feeling like you've become a little kid again, like very, like you can sometimes even feel yourself becoming small, you know what I mean? And trying to like yeah. stay out of the way or like you just quiet down and don't say anything or even just like going overextending, overcompensating, hardcore going out of your way to make someone else comfortable even if that looks like sometimes protecting them from their own feelings Ooh, like that's like a really common way that that actually shows up like i'm going to take responsibility for how you feel so i'm going to do everything in my power to make sure you don't get insecure to make sure you don't get anxious to make sure you don't feel shame so usually to also avoid confrontation because they feel like they're responsible for this person's inner experience and so that's a really great way to identify fawn. And then we have freeze, which kind of like we already chatted. You notice how do you like, okay, there's many ways to identify disassociation. There's like inward disassociation and outward disassociation. But the most common ways to notice disassociation is like when you get lost in your head mm -hmm. or have you ever like gone on a walk and all of a sudden you like look around and you're like, where the hell am I? It's like the last 10 minutes of like <laughs> completely disappeared and you don't even know right. how you got down the block because you were spiraling right. in your thoughts or daydreaming. Could be driving. One or the other. <laughs> oh Isn't that you're scary? Like so within that you're all of a sudden, it's like, you know, like how did I get here? Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes. like so that's the way one way to notice that you might be in freeze and also feeling like very hypersensitive and contracted. Because usually once we hit freeze, it's because your system's already gone over overwhelm. Like it short circuited and now you're in freeze. <laughs> and so you're feeling like sometimes just like detached from your reality or maybe it's apathy like you're not feeling any feelings in response to this thing you're like wow i'm so emotionally mature and intact when really you just completely already gone to space and like that's why you don't feel anything <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, i've had so I've many ex partners that are like you're so emotional i never feel anything and i'm like i know your trauma and i know that you're like literally just living in freeze like it's not that you're too intelligent to have emotions it's just because you're permanently checked out and you don't even know any other way to live wow yes yeah. I, I know some people like that i do i know some people like that oh, that's so sad it really is so sad 
Because like some people get confused because it's like, yeah, you might be a very intelligent person, but if you always just process and live in your head, it means that you're never actually in your body feeling your emotions. So that doesn't like you're probably shut down here, which means you're like living in freeze, but because you don't value feelings and don't even know that feelings are meant to be felt through the body, don't know that you're missing out. So lots of people just think they're superior because they don't have very many emotions outside of logic when really it's just like you've been in such a triggered or activated stress response for so long and you got stuck dysregulated. So that's another thing like lots of people because they don't know they're activated and they don't know how to regulate they usually just live in hyper or hypo arousal like without even knowing it and then you know what i mean their window of tolerance is constantly getting smaller and smaller and they get more fragile they get sick they have chronic stress all of these other symptoms that they think doesn't have anything to do with that but it's actually all because of that like our physical yeah. issues with sleep, with skin, with gut, with everything. Oh, and I know I do. I know some survivors that are still in that. They seem all like they're always sick. They're always sick. So, oh, wow. No, it's like so, my life forever. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. No, no, no. And I know I get that. I get that. Wow. So that's a challenge then out there for anybody watching to try and to go ahead and see where you are. Wow. But from a place of like non judgment, because when we meet ourselves in dysregulation from a place of like, oh, not again, or like, God damn, when am I going to get better? Or like, this is so annoying. Like, I hate this. It actually just induces more shame and self rejection. And it's a very bracing and forceful way to be with yourself in such a vulnerable, fragile and tender space. So that actually just makes you contract even more and it gets worse. Oh. So make sure that when you notice and witness this inside of yourself, we're like, ah, okay, curiosity, obviously, how interesting, how peculiar. And also like, oh, this is so sad. Like, here I am again. Like, how can I show up for me now? Like, right. in a loving, non abrasive way. Very right. important. Oh. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And anybody out there watching, of course, join her groups for more information, or maybe just to share your story a little bit. She's got this in tune training, <laughs> making sure I got it right this time in tune training. <laughs> so please. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and end because we can keep talking forever. I already can think of a gazillion more questions. But we'll save it for another time. Oh, yeah, we'll thank you so time. much for having me. I adore you. And I love oh. all the conversations we've even had prior to, which were amazing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, I can't wait to chat elsewhere. And if we end up chatting like this again, like whatever, I love, I'm a big fan of your group too and the work that you do. And like, thank oh. you on behalf of humanity for real, sacred service right here. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you have a great rest of your day, everybody out there watching. And a little bit later, I'll be putting on this stuff onto our, our chat, onto YouTube and podcasts and so on. I have a girl date. So, well, that sounds weird. I have a date with a friend. That sounds great. <laughs> that sounds weird, too. We're just going to, it's nothing weird. It's just two gals just going out. <laughs> And we're going to go shop somewhere. Let's just say that we're going to go support a local business. So that's what we're going out to do. Yes. That sounds amazing. I hope you have a beautiful time. And I can't wait to see you again when yes. our past yes. ends. And you guys all listening and so on. Have a great rest of your day. God bless. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.